The Los Angeles Lakers might have just drafted the biggest steal of the 2024 NBA draft in Dalton Connect. The 23-year-old drafted out of Tennessee was all over the place in terms of where people had him mocked pre-draft, but not many people expected him to fall all the way to the Lakers with the 17th overall pick. Just glancing at his college production, it's definitely eye-popping. 21.7 points and 4.9 rebounds a game, while shooting 39.7% from three on eight and a half attempts per game is impressive stuff. But the big knock against him is the fact that he's going to be a 23-year-old rookie. This could explain why he wasn't drafted higher, because especially in a draft that was considered quote-unquote weaker, teams drafting in the lottery were probably looking for more upside bets rather than safe win-now options. But the Lakers aren't in a position to be worrying about upside. They don't really have that luxury. They need players that can help them win now, and that's exactly what Dalton Connect is going to be able to do. We've started to see a trend in recent years with teams seemingly being more open to drafting older rookies with the understanding that those rookies are going to be able to help them win in the short term instead of being more long-term projects. Even looking at a guy as recent as the 2023 NBA draft in Jaime Jaquez, he was an older rookie coming into the league after playing four years in college, but Miami took him betting on the fact that he'd be able to contribute to winning fresh out of the box. If you're a team with championship aspirations or even just aspirations to be competitive, then drafting an older rookie with seamless fit is exactly what you should be trying to do, and that's exactly what the Lakers did by drafting Connect. There is a ton to love about his game, but where you're really going to see his impact in year one is his ability to slide in as a spot-up shooter on the wing, operating as a knockdown guy when LeBron and Anthony Davis are demanding a ton of defensive attention, operating in their two-man game. He shot 47.8% from three on spot ups this year on 69 total attempts, and he scored roughly 1.2 points per possession on spot ups, good enough to put him in the 94th percentile in spot up points per possession. That is some really nice efficiency and exactly what you want from more of a complimentary piece. You can have him hang out in the corner and around the perimeter so that when the defense helps off of him to help onto the ball, he's gonna be wide open for easy looks. And it's a double-edged sword, especially when you're talking about his fit with the Lakers, because if you help off of Connect, we know LeBron's going to be able to find him. But if you don't help off of Connect, then you're just going to be giving LeBron more space to work with. So regardless, having Connect on the floor plays right into the Lakers' hands. What's great about Connect as well is that he isn't just some spot-up three-point shooter. He is fully capable of leveraging those aggressive closeouts that teams are going to have to make onto him into driving opportunities. And he can finish at the rim through contact and create some difficult finishing angles really well. And not to mention, he is a really great vertical athlete being able to throw down some vicious slams. Now, continuing in the vein of his perimeter shooting ability, he also showcased some ability as a movement shooter, something that is almost definitely going to be taken advantage of by JJ Reddick. Look at some of this film of JJ coming off screens in the NBA and getting into these difficult movement threes. Now watch some of this tape from Connect in college, and you can see that the blueprint is there for him to operate in some similar ways, getting these little flare screens on the wing to capitalize on the little bit of the space that the defense surrenders as they try to process the action. Additionally, we know how much JJ Redick loves baseline out of bounds plays, and Tennessee gave him plenty of options to look at for ways to use Connect as a shooter in these situations. He's going to be a great option for LA to draw plays for to try and get some easy looks coming off of an inbound pass. Aside from just knocking down his threes and attacking closeouts, we're really going to be able to see what Connect can do off ball as a cutter, as that was something he excelled at during his time in college. Connect is an excellent cutter, knowing exactly when to make timely cuts to the basket to create release valves for his teammates to find him on. He's great at recognizing when his teammates are in trouble and looking for a pass to get out of a bad situation, and Connect knows how to warp a defense and capitalize on how they're set up in order to generate high percentage offense. Of the 34 shot attempts that Connect had coming off of cuts, he made 27 of them, which tells me not only is he really good at converting on these cutting opportunities, but he's also able to make cuts that are more likely to result in open looks at the rim. 
Tennessee would often set up as though they're going to have him come off of a pin down on the weak side of the floor, only to instead have it actually be a flex screen, allowing him to cut to the rim and get good looks in the middle of the paint. He thrived in these situations where you have a big in the high post, and from a defense's perspective, it's possible that they're setting up for a high post triple handoff, feeding the big so that connect can come and get the handoff, and you end up with an empty side pick and roll. The defender here is going to try to top lock connect so that he's not able to get any pass coming off of a screen or a handoff. This allows Connect to turn the action into an easy high-low, with the big getting the high post entry and Connect leaving his defender in the dust on the way to the rim for the easy finish. It looks here as though they're going to clear out to create a post-up opportunity, with Connect making this entry pass and starting to exit the strong side, but he catches the defense slacking a little bit, cutting up the middle to get the pass and finishing at the basket. It's worth pointing out that he was not a high volume cutter during his final year in college, but even though it wasn't a major part of his role, I think the tape here shows that if he prioritizes that in the NBA, he's gonna be able to contribute in that department immediately. All of the off ball stuff is great for allowing Connect to set himself up for a long career in the NBA, but he was projected in some mock drafts as a top 10 pick. So how much upside is there for him in terms of not just being a plug and play role player, but anything above that? This is where it's kind of tough to say. In my opinion might be a little bit polarizing. As of right now, I don't think his handle is quite where you need it to be to really want him doing a ton of on ball creation against NBA level defense. He might have gotten by in college against generally weaker defenders, but he's probably going to have to deal with better coverage on average on any given night in the NBA. I mentioned earlier that Connect is a solid vertical athlete, but I don't think he leverages that athleticism into getting by the defender in front of him on a consistent enough of a basis for him to be a high volume on ball driver. It's definitely worth experimenting, though, with putting the ball in his hands with some bench lineups to see what you can get out of him. There's some flashes here and there of a mid-range pull-up shooting ability when he's able to get separation from his defenders after getting ball screens, and he can punish drop coverage pretty well when he's coming off those screens. He was also an incredibly efficient post-up player, scoring 1.12 points per post-up possession during his final year in college. So this is an area where when he's running with these bench units, they have a little bit of offense that they can go to in certain situations. I'll be interested to see how he develops as a passer. While Connect can definitely score, I wouldn't say he's the best passer in the world, so defenses can comfortably load up on him to try and get the ball out of his hands and force him to make quick and difficult reads. I'm not saying he can't make reads against more aggressive defensive coverages, but it's definitely something that he's gonna need to develop to improve as an overall dynamic offensive piece. Another point of discussion people have with Connect is his defense. He's six foot six with a six foot nine or higher wingspan. So it's surprising that his defense doesn't pop more given the physical gifts that he has at his disposal. The Lakers almost certainly are more interested in what he's gonna bring to the table offensively rather than defensively, considering that they already have pretty decent defensive infrastructure. But Connect growing into a competent defensive player is gonna directly impact whether or not you keep him on the floor for 15 minutes a game or 25 minutes a game. It's worth acknowledging that he was the go-to guy during his final year in college, and with a higher usage offensively, we typically see players have decreased defensive engagement. So the question is gonna be whether or not Connect's shortcomings as a defender are a byproduct of having to shoulder a larger offensive load, or if they're more deeply rooted issues with him as a player. One thing is for sure though, he's not gonna have that excuse of high offensive burden in the NBA. This pick makes a ton of sense from the Lakers perspective. They're in win now mode around LeBron and AD, and they don't have time to try and develop project players. They need guys who can come in and contribute from day one, and that's exactly what Dalton Connect is. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more stuff like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like. It seriously helps me out so much. Regardless, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.